it's what's the word I'm looking for? It's oppressive. Yeah, it's torrential. It's torrential, but the word I was looking for, Ben, mm. was oppressive. Just like four days in a row, you think it's never going to end. It's uh, it almost makes me uh, just want to stay inside all day. <laughs> My dad used to say, "If the ring keeps up, it won't come down." Mm. Not a funny guy. Then I gotta get going. If it's for me, I'm not here. Hello. No, huh? Sure's right here. Dad's for you. Ben, I just. Uh, hello. David Stanick. I haven't heard that name since. Uh, not only do I remember what you look like, but I can picture your backhand like it was yesterday. You are. No, David. I. I. Uh, I would love to get together. It'd be fun, you know. And maybe you want to stop by the office. We'll grab a bite. Reminisce. Uh, we could do that. But, uh, you know, I have to warn you, I haven't played in um, at least 12 years competitively. So if you just want to hit some, we don't have to keep a score. Yeah. Now, that's, you know, I, you know if you've been playing and, you, and you're really looking for competition, you should just go to the club and try to pick up a game. No, I think you, my friend, are out of your mind. You can rewrite history all you want. But I can beat you with my eyes closed, just based on on memory. How about Friday at five? Will that work out for you? I'll see you. Okay, David, I will see you there. Bye. Oh, this guy gets me. He gets me going. Dad, you're all red. Oh, don't get me started. What's wrong? Man, this guy really gets my goat. Who who was that? Dave Stanek is this table tennis player that I knew when I was a kid, and then again as an adult. Mm -hmm. So this is an old rival of yours. Yeah. 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 I think I've seen pictures. Yeah, he's not a photogenic man. <laughs> Neither were you. <laughs> Did you have to say that? I'm sorry, Dad, but, you know, there were two ugly guys in the photo. One was you, one was David Stanek. So you're uh, you're going to play this guy... Uh... Well, he wants to play me for money, but... You know, has this guy been uh, playing Yeah, a lot? he still competes. He does? Yeah. And you he can compete tipped. at your age? How do you compete? Oh, because you don't have to move when you play table tennis. Not correct. Pretty much. No, uh, he... It's a play... sissy sport. You know it. Come here and say that. No, it's not a sissy sport at all. In fact, it's uh, the best players in the world now. I would match them head to head against any professional athlete. Are you serious? Yeah. Actually, Dad, if you're if you're going to get your ass whipped, I wouldn't mind being there. I don't know. It's kind of a rough uh, environment, the uh, club. No, you think it would be a bad influence on me? I don't want you to fall in with some bad types. Where's the club, Tijuana? Yeah, <laughs> it's downtown. It's right above the Ford uh, dealership. Oh, that is bad, yeah. Yeah. Near an auto dealership. And I also don't I'll like you to be around gambling. So, but are you going to gamble on this game? Well, he thinks it's a gamble. I, I, I think it's a sure thing. Do you have change for 20? Why? I want to put 10 bucks down on David Stanek. So your early experience as an employee was not satisfying? Well, I was a temp. And the bad thing was that I didn't have any skills. So I would go to the temp agency and I would say, I need to work. I've got to put meat on the table. Right. And then they would say, well, what can you do? And I would say, well, I can't do anything, but I need to work. This is bull. I can't be walking around here without a job. I was a full-time baby furniture salesperson, mm -hmm. which, you know, I didn't do too well at because I don't like children. Oh, I didn't realize that. Or babies or the furniture that they claim they need. But still, it was good to be bringing in some uh, some money, I bet. Yes, and that was a commission job. Mm -hmm. You know, I was always trying to scoop the other salespeople. And one time a couple came in. Well, this would often happen. The couple would come in with their baby. If I saw that another salesperson was trying to nab them, I would just grab them and say, Look, if you think he thinks your baby is cute, I think your baby is adorable. What would you like? This baby should have a print campaign to beat the band. This baby is a baby that's going to sell tickets. This baby needs a stroller. And then I close. That is beautiful. And sometimes I would take it too far. How so? I would say this baby makes that baby look like a ghoul or a living gargoyle. Dr. Katz's office. Hello? Could you make it quick? Um... I need the phone line. What are you doing? I'm trying to win tickets to the opera on the radio, and I need the phone. I need all three lines. Are you trying to win opera tickets? Yes. Really? Yes. Why? Because I like opera. It's Aida. Oh, Aida's on. Yes. I love that one. Really? Well, Aida? Yeah. What do you like about it? Uh, the uh, Aida is great, isn't it? Do you know what opera is? Yes, I think I do, Laura. 
I grew up on it. All right, hold on. I mean, my whole early life was formed by opera. Can you sing me some? I can uh, do the uh, the theme from Aida. Okay. Aida. Da, da, da. And uh, all those women come out with sparklers, roller skate. And then when I was when I was a bus girl, my worst night was when this old woman came into the pie shop, and she had a piece of peach pie, and she seemed very very content. Mm -hmm. And then the minute she finished her pie, she puked it all up right onto the dish. But she had no reaction. Like you know how when you vomit and you think you're dying and you're sweaty and red, right. she just finished her pie and calmly vomited it all right onto the pie dish. And then slowly got up and just paid her check. And then all the other waiters looked at the new girl, that was me, and they said, we'll give you an extra five bucks if you clean up the puke. No, I just, I haven't competed in so long, Ben, and, and you know, when I used to play in tournaments, I would wake up nauseous, I would throw up first thing in the morning. Yeah. And now... And I'm out of shape, and I don't, I don't want to hurt myself. I don't want to embarrass me and or you. Plus, the $50,000 is a lot of money to play for one game. 50 grand? <laughs> yeah. Really? Yeah, he called. I would not play uh, the ping pong match for 50 grand. How much is it for, really? No, it's a lot of money. I, I, I don't think you need to know. Is it over $1,000? Bring some uh, collateral. You know, uh, Dad, the way to beat this guy is uh, you got to psych him out. And uh, I can help you with that. You know? Okay, I mean, you're not you're not really far off because a lot of it is psychological. Exactly, and if you can uh, start psyching him out now, a week before the match, mm -hmm. what you should start to do is start calling him all the time. Yeah. You know, like every two minutes, you call him back, redial, call back. And just hang up? No, you just say, how you doing? You know, very calm, very serene. How you doing? How you feeling? I have to say, hey, uh, Dave, I uh, just transferred all of your money to an account in Switzerland. Mm. No, 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 that's no, not good. no, okay. that's not good. Dave, how you doing? Okay. Don't contrive anything. Just, okay. Dave, how we doing? Dave, how you doing? How we doing? How we doing? Say that. How we doing? Dave, how we doing? A little menacing. Yeah. And then what I will do? Yeah. I will follow the guy around wherever he goes, wherever he okay. eats, and I will put ground glass in his food, and he will die. Ben, that's sweet, but really not necessary. No, Dad, I, I will, yeah. uh, I will help you through it. You just have to. Uh, it's going to be a little different. It's going to be a difficult week. Hey, I will get you to it. If you will help me through it. You know what? I take it back. <laughs> I hope you lose. Goodbye. You seem really energized, Laura. That's great to see. Oh, I think it's because this friend of mine who's into all this holistic stuff gave me these energy crystals. Mm -hmm. it, they're kind of amazing. They're these crystals that you just put on a flat surface and then you grind them into a powder. Right. And then you take this powder and you like snort it up your nose. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's amazing. I feel like I'm going to just spend this session talking about nothing. So get ready. <laughs> I was standing in line at a deli in New York. Right. And I often forget how everyone includes you in their lives in New York. And I was just standing behind this woman. And she ordered a coffee. She says, um, I'll have a decaf coffee. Mm -hmm. And the guy behind the counter said, decaf? And apparently that opened the floodgates for, oh, yeah, <laughs> I can't have caffeine. Yeah, my doctor says I'm already too tightly wound. Yeah, I, I can't have caffeine. Please don't give it to me. <laughs> See, I pulled my hair out one by one. I pulled all the hair out of my head. This is a wig. This is a wig. Yeah, I haven't been touched since 1982. <laughs> decaf. Hey, Laura. Yeah? Did you know Mozart wrote his first opera when he was 12? Really? Yeah. La finita semplice. Semplice. Right, right, right. But I was talking about the French translation, the Simplice. Did you know Beethoven was uh, deaf by the time he was 16? <sighs> did you know Verdi was uh, blind, had no legs? Hmm. Yeah. Did you know Benjamin Britten, the famous opera guy, just a head, no body whatsoever, and he was also, unfortunately, deaf and blind? That's amazing. A deaf and blind mute head. That wow. is like, uh, it's overwhelming. But that's the way it used to be like 200 years ago when opera was big. I mean, you just went out and you did it. Do you prefer Lento or Adagio? What kind of a question is that? Uh, it's an opera one. It's not like something that you choose between. All right, well, let me make it easier for you. Do you prefer 
Vegetable or split pea? Split pea. Yeah, me too. Do you like minestrone? Not really. Did you ever uh, go see Verdi's Minestrone? <laughs> That's an awesome opera. The big, huge, life-size potato cube comes out and sings next to the big, huge minestrone bean, and they want to get together in the same soup. Oh, but ben, different, different, please don't all, start all another. from different. And because he's a potato, all right, I know, she's a I bean. Saw it. I know the they story. can't get together. Oh man, have you seen the opera Chicken and Rice? I was staying with my mom in a hotel in New York, mm -hmm. and we shared the same room, slept in the same bed, because a good night's sleep is for the idle rich. And my mom made all the arrangements, so we had to be in bed together. And we went out to dinner, you know, before we went to bed. We were sleeping at about 2 o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. My mom turns to me and says, I didn't think that salad was so great. And I'm like, what are you talking about? The salad that you had eight hours ago, that wasn't good? I'm just saying, I didn't think it was so great. Well, I'm glad you told me, but now that you've opened the doors of communication, you know what? I didn't think my childhood was so great. Now get some sleep and stop spooning me. Dr. Katz's office. Laura, it's Luciano Pavarotti. Hi, Ben. That's Luciano Pavarotti. Hi, Ben. Not Ben, Luciano. Say it with me. No. Fine. Hey, did you win your ticket? No, I didn't get in. It's Luciano Pavarotti again. Just got in. Hello, Laura. Uh. Laura. Well, look, Laura. Hello, it's Placido Domingo. Is Luciano Pavarotti there? Placido? See? Si? It's Luciano. Ah, oh, ciao, Luciano. Ah, oh, ciao, Placido. How are you doing today, Luciano? Good. What are you doing today? Not much. Sitting around. I watch a little tube. I'm losing my accent. <laughs> Laura, are you still there? Oh, come on, Dad, get up. Ben, what is, right? what is going on Let's here? Go. Come on, here we go. Ben, are you... Are we did, ready or what? Are we you, ready for the day? I, wait, what time is it? Right, it's, it's time to get up. It's time to start training. Oh. My feeling is that your reactions have probably faded over the years. You know, you're not uh, the same man you were 30 years ago. You probably can't handle... I'm sorry, beg your pardon? You don't have the same hand-eye cord... Can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you probably don't have the same hand-eye coordination you used to. That's why I figured if I get you up and start training you every day, mm -hmm. you, know, you get the old reactions back. You get the uh, the eye of the tiger, you know? Mm -hmm. You get that spirit of comp... Dad, you're sleeping. <laughs> when you say young, uh, Kathy, how young do you mean? I went out with one guy that was so young he still lived at home with his parents. Mm -hmm. His mom and dad would encourage me to just take him in. Like a boarder and also a slash boyfriend. I helped him find his first apartment and uh, he, he got a bill and then he handed it to me with just big wide eyes and said, what do I do with this? I don't, uh, I don't really follow. Because he didn't have a checking account, so he'd never written a check before. Ah. Yeah. Now you'd think something like that might be special, you know, between two people. Oh, our first check. It was irritating. So that one didn't work out so well. How old was this guy? 25. And I'm um, not. So you can do the math. Right. You know, I guess what I really need to look at is the pattern of suitors I've had. There was this other guy that I went to Italy with. I took a trip to Italy. You know, I loved it. It is beautiful. I fell in love with Venice. I thought it was the most beautiful city in the world. And my boyfriend at the time, Neil, said that he thought that what they should do in Venice is that they should drain the canals because a lot of people probably drop their sunglasses in there. Do you know what I'm saying? He didn't get it. Ben, these are late. How about a hi? Hi, Ben, these are late. <sighs> Thanks. Long time no see. It's You're kind of overdue for a visit if you catch me. Well, well, what do you mean? I was here two days ago. Those late fees, you know, they're the lifeblood of Vic's videos. I mean, yeah. they're our bread and butter. Oh, well, I just I don't understand why you charge a full night's rental just because shouldn't you give a discount break? The idea of the late fee is that it's a punishment. It's a fine. It's a severe fine right, for I mean, a I... severe crime. But is it is it that severe? Just, you know... In the context of a video store, yes, it is. Right, but... Is it like murder or anything like that? No, not at all. Not at all. Yeah, because I'm usually not late. It's ten bucks. Are you serious? I'm ten... serious. Ten dollars. 
But that's as much as I paid for the videos to begin with. I'm not going to go over this. She charged full rental rates for full rental. For it's a hundred percent fine for a late rent. It's a little uh, punitive, isn't it? A little punitive. It's a hundred percent punitive. Well, can't you put it on my account because I wanted to There's rent? No account. This ain't no country store. So I got to rent this video today. I'm wondering if you have it in. What are you looking for? It's a Legends of Table Tennis. Do you have a table tennis section? Of course we do. We'd be out of business by now if we didn't have a complete table tennis section. Let me, uh, let me look that up on the computer. Oh, gosh. There was a quicker geek, so you, it's out. Yeah. I have myths of table tennis. Mm -hmm. I have great moments of table tennis. I have mm -hmm. good moments in table tennis. Yeah. I have typical moments in table tennis. Huh, I didn't know there was going to be so many choices. Yeah, my dad used to be a, a nationally ranked table tennis player. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I can, wow. Yeah. You're proud of your father, huh? He actually won a lot of tournaments. Oh, really? Tournaments? That's nice. Sounds like fun. My father was a nun. I called this friend of mine who now has a, a four-year-old, and it's really hard to talk to her because every time I call, you know, just to see what's up, I go, hey, Carol, how's it going? And she goes, oh, just a second, Jacob wants to say hi to you. Jacob, say hi. Say hi, Jacob. Say hi. Honey, say hi. Say hi to Laura. Say hi. Jacob, say hi. Say hi, Jacob. Say hi. Jacob, say hi. I'm like, oh, my God. So at some point, I hung up the phone. Mm -hmm. She called me back. She goes, what happened? I go, oh, that's my daughter, Katie. She just hung up the phone. Oh, I didn't know you had a kid. Yeah. Katie, say hi. Say hi, Katie. Katie, say hi. Well, that's why, Dr. Katz, I don't think I'm going to have any children. I'm just hoping to God I'm barren. I don't know if you're aware of this, but um, babies are very selfish. It's just me, me, me. Yeah. And if you want a minute's peace, they don't even care. And they look at you like, hey, feed me. And then they pull this, like, passive-aggressive, oh, pick me up, I don't want to walk. That's what being a child is all about. You know, you, you are their caretaker. My baby will, will just have boundaries. Mm -hmm. I say there's a week or two of coasting, and then I have to set some very strict boundaries. But you cry easily. Yeah, I do. And when, when I cry more when I'm in a relationship. Yeah. What My boyfriend now complains that I cry all the time. He thinks there's something wrong with me, which is insane of him. Because he's because he's the one who's crazy, Doctor Katz. Why are you taking his side? That's absurd. No, I'm not. I'm not. He's a crazy person who thinks because I cry at phone commercials, but sometimes those phone commercials are crafty, where they'll talk about how if you can't even get the person on the phone, you won't even see him, and then they're in a field. And who needs that? Because what's sadder than a field because it represents separation? <laughs> Why are you being just so condescending with no, me? No, I'm trying to comfort you. It's, you know, you're not letting oh, me I'm comfort Oh, I get the heaves. You. Oh, oh, God. When I cry really hard, I get the heaves. Oh, 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 that was cathartic. Debbie, stop pacing. You're, you're making me nervous. I'm just trying to keep my legs loose, you know? Yeah, I hope you're not going to be too tense, because that's going to affect your game. you got to be on. you got to be loose. I have to be alert. I have to be very alert, and I have to be willing yeah. to commit to a shot. You know, that's my big fear. You're talking fast. You're all, you're all well, because freaked I'm, out. No, I'm a little wound up. Because dad, I'm, dad, dad, dad. Yeah. Do this line of cocaine. Settle down. <laughs> okay. I think what you need to do is just sit and focus no. for a little bit. You know, take this, uh, you got all this uh, tense energy now. Hold on one second. Leah, hi. I I thought you died. That's Leah Newberg. She was one of the best uh, yeah, women players of all time. Looks it. Yeah. Tell by the hat. So this has got to be a little bit uh, nostalgic for you. Oh, God, Ben. You don't know the half of it. Yeah, all these ping pong paddles. Yeah. Old man. No, it's, it's a, you know, it's the smells of the place that are so powerful for me. Yeah, I've noticed yeah. that. And it's just like an aphrodisiac, mm -hmm. you know? But the women of table tennis counter that effect, you know. But Dad, I want I want you to you know get focused now. This is the time. Do you want to you wanna do any breathing exercises? Do you want me to uh, read you poetry? No. What, what what helps me is I I have. Would to it be ask. embarrassing if I gave you a rub down? Because I brought oils. Now, hold on one second, but I'm going to take this call. What are you talking about? The, the guy said there's a phone call for me at the desk. Hang on one second. I'll be right back. Okay. I'll uh, I'll wait here. Ben, some, uh, some bad news. 
He has to cancel. He got called back to the office on on a short notice. The guy canceled? Yeah. You kidding? See, that's the difference between uh, being a professional through and through. Oh. And being a guy like Stanek, who is just a, a show pony. Dad. You know, he's in it for the chicks, <laughs> for the glamour, for the ride. I gotta be honest with you, Dad. I was sort of rooting for Dave. Yeah, I, I, I can't hear you. Well, why not? Hurts too much. So, Dad, uh, man, so you, you almost kind of win by forfeit. Lucky break. Lucky break for Stanek. He saved himself some humiliation and $750. That's good that you can go home with that belief, too. Yeah, and you can come with me, too. And I'm gonna stay. Okay, how about if we play one game, I give you a 15-point head start. You're on. Okay. I'm gonna whip your ass, cats, huh? Mm -hmm. I hope you're hungry, because I'm gonna feed you a steady diet of Ben. Huh, Dad? Yeah. How do you like your Ben? We got backhand Ben, we got forehand Ben, we got in-your-face Ben. Mm-hmm.